This is Dr. Charles Parker, and you're listening to Core Brain Journal. It's a place where I connect both fresh discoveries and interesting different perspectives from advanced mind science with the realities of real people and everyday life down on Main Street. Well, welcome aboard, folks. Dr. Charles Parker here one more time, and we are very, very privileged to speak to an international thought leader on issues that are absolutely relevant for every single person that's listening to anything on Core Brain Journal. And Tom O'Brien, thank you once again for coming on board. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Parker. It's always a pleasure to work with you. So Tom was on back in 061, Core Brain Journal 061, and we were just talking before we started the recording. It's been almost exactly two years ago, and it seems like it was probably a month ago, so much has happened in those two years. It's been yes. a very busy time. It's amazing. So on that particular occasion, we were talking about Tom's new book then, The Autoimmune Fix. And this particular occasion, we're going to talk about his new book, his newer book, You Can Fix Your Brain One Hour a Week. And this is how to do it. It's the best in productivity, memory, and sleep. And I don't think I've said that completely accurately. But, Tom, you're certainly welcome to correct me. Oh, thank you. It's uh, You can fix your brain one hour a week to the best memory, productivity, and sleep you've ever had. I mean, you got so many good keywords in there. (laughs) It has to be at the top of the list. Well, you know, it was a team effort to come up with the title. and uh, That's that's a great, great set of words. It's fantastic. So I'm going to introduce Tom, and then we'll come back, and we're going to work through little segments of the book. So stay tuned because this is such a privilege and you guys are going to, your socks are going to roll up and down with this particular meeting. So first of all, let me remind you, the core brain is supported by Great Plains Laboratory. They are deep international biomedical testing leaders for improved targeted mind science details, which is what we're all about in this meeting. As both a laboratory and webinar global thought leaders, they provide the most comprehensive set of hard data measurement tools for real biomedical answers beyond the commonplace guesswork. They also provide multiple training webinars for both the public and really to educate medical providers on how to use that data effectively in their offices globally. Check out their website for references and testing details. And take note, you can register, my friends, for a complimentary test drawing over at this URL that I'm going to give you. And they have a variety of different tests, and they're changing them every week and being supportive here with Core Brain Journal. So if you go over to Great Plains Laboratory, all one word, greatplainslaboratory.com forward slash CBJ for Core Brain Journal, you can enter a drawing for a test over there. And... It's very dog, and those tests are valued between two hundred and four hundred dollars. So it's going to be pretty doggone good. So let me tell you a little bit about Tom, and I should say Dr. O'Brien. I know him too well. He and I have been talking back and forth for many years now. He is an internationally recognized speaker and investigator who insightfully reports on chronic disease and metabolic disorders. He organized the popular Gluten Summit in November of two thousand thirteen that has changed the diagnostic game regarding non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Dr. O'Brien has more than 30 years of experience as a functional medicine practitioner and is adjunct faculty on the Institute of Functional Medicine. Dr. Mark Hyman is the chief over there. He's the host of the Autoimmune Summit, his complimentary video training series on how to identify and correct autoimmunity. And by the way, the link to that is right there on the front page of Core Brain Journal. If you're interested in popping over, it's still running. It's alive. So the problem, he says, that is too often a problem with the doctors is that we tell people that we're fine, that our headaches and weight gain are caused by simple stress, and the symptoms are not normal. They may indicate a current or potential autoimmune condition, which we're going to talk about in detail that can only get worse if it's not identified and addressed in specific treatment protocols. Focusing on tried and tested solutions to not only help you feel better, but heal that inflammation, causing symptoms of disease. His new book, The Autoimmune Fix, is a step in that direction. And folks, that is exactly what he's talking about in this particular book, 
you can fix your brain in one hour a week. So we're going to talk about that. So let's get started. And you know, I'm, I'm busting to get on and talk about the book directly with your permission, Tom. And I think we just start with the, that first chapter, because I think it's when you're talking about the issue of fixing your brain, it's interesting that the person's like, well, what's the medication? What would be the medication that we would use? Is it going to be Adderall? Adderall, that'll fix my brain. No, I think I need a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. That will fix my brain. Right. No, we're, we're on a completely different level, folks. Fasten your seatbelts. Let's get started with the first chapter and talk a little bit about some of the things like our environmental toxins and get started with that. You bet. Well, let's see. How shall we start with that? I'll just I'll give you an example. We know now from Dr. Dale Bredesen that there are five, five different types of Alzheimer's that have been identified. So let's just talk about the end stage, you know, when people are diagnosed with that kind of a disease. There are five different types, and the most common type, between 60 to 65% of the people that are being identified have inhalation Alzheimer's. Is that right? That means it's what they're breathing ah. that's going right through their permeable lungs, into their bloodstream, straight up to the brain, getting through the blood-brain barrier, activating the immune system of the brain called the glial cells to fight what does particulate matter that we're breathing and that inflammation in the brain that happens as a result of the immune system responding to protect you kills off cells and one day of that is not a problem but 20 years 30 years of that is a huge problem we know that in the mid 90s when they did autopsies on dogs in Mexico City, every dog they checked had evidence of Alzheimer's in their Is brain. Is that right? Oh. Every dog. Oh my and in the mid-2000s to the late 2000s, the urine tests and the blood tests came out. Every child they check in Mexico City has evidence of brain inflammation, and some of them early Alzheimer's, as children already. <sighs> and it's because they're breathing the air. Mm. And it's just the worst air. And if you want to know how bad it is in your town, take your car to the car wash. Go to a nice car wash. You know, the one where the guy's got the water bottle in his hip and he goes, <laughs> you know, squirts your windshield and wipes it down. Get a nice car wash. Then drive home, park your car outside, set your alarm for four hours, go back outside in four hours and run your hand across the windshield. That's what you're breathing. That particulate matter that you're breathing is getting into your lungs, and we're being assaulted by that. And there are so many environmental toxins. How many people do you know whose lives have been saved from a fire because they were sleeping under flame-retardant-soaked down comforters? Or the clothes that infants that are wearing clothes soaked in flame-retardant chemicals. That these chemicals, they outgas, they leak just a little bit. You can't smell it. Just a little bit. And it's not a problem. There's no study that shows the sleeper that your infant wears by itself is going to cause any kind of problems. But this stuff accumulates. So between the air pollution toxins getting in, the air, the uh, flame retardant clothing leaking, those chemicals breathed in, the formaldehyde, that's in the carpet, the uh, formaldehyde that's in the press board of your kitchen cabinets. Mm. Uh, if they're not solid wood, they're press wood, and they're, they're soaked in formaldehyde. The insect repellents that you spray around the house, all of this stuff that we're unfortunately exposed to now, the Journal of Pediatrics, of all journals, Dr. Parker, the Journal of Pediatrics published a paper that it's 250 pounds of toxic chemicals per person per day being dumped in the U.S. 250 oh pounds per person per day. So just between you and I, that's 500 pounds a day. That's 10 50-pound bags every day. And this stuff's in the air. It's in the uh, food. It's in the water. I mean, it's an overwhelming topic when you think mm -hmm. about it. It's completely overwhelming, but if we don't start to put a little attention on this, 
for our, our own bodies and the health of ourselves and our family. I mean, the pharmaceutical industry, unfortunately, doesn't think this way. And they're really happy that you take whatever medications they produce to help reduce the symptoms. But I want to give you the analogy. So when you go to the doctor, because you find a holistic doctor or a functional medicine doctor, or you uh, listen to this core brain podcast and you're looking for answers because you've been diagnosed with diabetes. Let's use that as an example, or your son's diagnosed with attention deficit. It doesn't matter what it is, but it's like you've fallen over a waterfall and you've crashed into the pond below. You swim up to the surface and you, you spit the water out and you're trying to stay afloat in the pond of diabetes or in the pond of attention deficit, or the pond of recurrent miscarriages. It doesn't matter what the symptoms are. You're trying to stay afloat in the pond. But it's really hard to stay afloat because the waterfall keeps, the water keeps falling from the waterfall into the pond that you're stuck in. You're still living the lifestyle that's caused the problem. So everybody wants the life jacket that keeps them afloat in the pond of diabetes, or the pond of seizures, or the pond of recurrent miscarriages. And you want the safest life jacket possible, the one with the least side effects. So you try the natural approach first, you know, but if it doesn't work, you take the drugs. Don't be silly. You've got to stay afloat. You've got to be able to function. But you don't stay in the pond. Walk over to the side of the pond. Get out of the water. Walk up the hill. Go back up river and figure out what fell in the river. They carried me downstream and I fell over the waterfall eventually into the pond of diabetes. That's called going upstream. And that's what our society is not trained to do. We trust our doctors who are trained to give you life jackets to stay in the pond. And you need another member on your healthcare team. Don't fire your doctor. They're probably really good at what they do. But you need someone that's going to help you go upstream to figure out what the heck happened here. Why did this happen to me? That's how Dale, Dr. Dale Bredesen has reversed and he's published on reversing over 100 cases of Alzheimer's, over 100 in his book, The End of Alzheimer's. But it takes five years, but you just keep hitting base hits. You'll win the ball game. You got me excited. I got to get him on, Tom. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know about that one. Oh, it's amazing. So you actually start thinking about the whole thing. And we're looking at, really, the question I asked you was about toxins. The environment is significantly impacting all of our psychological because the brain is the canary in the coal mine. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. so what happens is if we don't really pay attention to those things and look way behind us, go deeper into it instead of just doing symptomatic care, we're going to miss the boat. And we're yeah. just going to keep in the pond and suck and wind. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right, folks. And you know, the, uh, Dr. Parker, you, you know more than I do, the numbers on kids with autism and how they're skyrocketing. Folks, this is not good. And let me do my bandwagon for just a moment that we don't have time to mess around anymore. We don't have time. I'm going to tell you two studies, and you'll see how they connect to each other. The first study from the World Wildlife Fund, published a few years ago, I think it was three years ago now, that between 1970 and 2011, in 41 years, there has been on average a 58% reduction in populations of all vertebrate species, anything with a spine, the birds, the insects, the fish, the mammals, 58% of all of them are gone. Oh my God. In 41 years, 58%. Now for the birds, it was 35%. For mammals near fresh water, it's 78%. 78% of the beavers are gone. The porcupines, they're gone. They're gone in 41 years. So the overall average is 58% for all of them. Second study, why is it that 78% of the beavers are gone? They're drinking the water. And if you were drinking the water coming out of the streams or the rivers by your house, you'd get cancer quicker you'd be unable to reproduce just like the animals. Second study, they did a meta-analysis, which means they looked at a whole bunch of studies on one subject, 186 studies. And this was between 1974 and 2011, so 37 years, almost the same time period. The subject, sperm count in healthy men, not infertile men, healthy men. 
and the average is a 59% reduction in sperm count in 37 years. Now, that doesn't mean anything to anybody until you realize that scientists worry about extinction of a species at 72%. Oh, my God. 59% in 37 years. What do you think is going to happen in the next 20 years? And this is all because of these endocrine-disrupting chemicals that get into our bodies and they bind onto our estrogen and testosterone receptor sites. And guys, that's premature ejaculation, low sperm count, low sperm uh, motility, infertile. Mm -hmm. You can't impregnate a woman. And ladies, you don't ovulate well and the eggs aren't very good because they're full of toxic chemicals. Dr. Parker, who conquered the Romans? Who conquered the Roman (laughs) civilization? Excellent point. (laughs) No one. They died a natural death. (laughs) They died off. The whole civilization died off in between 400 and 500 AD. Why? They built lead culverts to carry the water through Rome. All the water was through lead culverts, and they put lead in the wine. And lead binds to your testosterone receptor sites in the testes and many other areas in your brain. But the Romans became infertile. And they died out because they weren't having kids anymore. That's what's happening to us. I mean, scientists are actually publishing now on what they call the sixth extinction within the next 50 years. And just Google sixth extinction. And it's us. It's us. So we have to wake up to the dynamic of what's going on and not just look for the life jacket. You need the life jacket to stay afloat with the symptoms that you've developed. But get out of the water and go back upstream and figure out what fell in the river. And when you deal with that, you don't need the life jacket anymore. And you can wean down and eventually off of your diabetes medication, off of your blood pressure medication, because your blood pressure is normal now. And you just have to learn about this. And it's, it takes a long time. It's overwhelming. There's so much to learn because we think it's okay to go to the coffee shop and get a coffee to go. When you get a coffee to go, they put a lid on it. That plastic lid, the the steam from the hot beverage goes up to the underside of the lid. It condenses. It drips back down to the coffee full of bisphenol A, one of the chemicals that allows plastic to be molded. Bisphenol A is an endocrine disruptor. It binds onto your estrogen and testosterone receptor sites. You put the coffee cup up to your lips. The hot liquid hits the whole underside of the lid, tapers down into the opening full of bisphenol A, binds to your receptor sites. That's just one example. So what do you do? You go get one of these little stainless steel coffee mugs. You actually get four of them. Exactly. Dr. Parker's holding his up and I'm holding mine. (laughs) And you buy four of them and you, you go to the coffee shop with one and you say, here, fill it up, please. And then you drive to work, you're sipping on it, you come home, you bring it in the house at night, you wash it out, put it in the kitchen sink to dry, and the next day you go to work and you forgot it. And you stop at the coffee shop because you have to have your coffee, so you get the old plastic one again. So that's why you get four of them, and you keep them in a plastic bag in the car. Why in a bag? Because if you got them loose in the car, they roll around when you turn corners, they clank into each other, and it's an annoyance. (laughs) Make a bunch of noise. That's right. So you keep them in a bag. And when you've got four of them on your kitchen sink drying off, you say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You put them by the door to take them out the next morning. That's the kind of lifestyle you have to start living to protect your children and to protect Mm -hmm. you and your brain. That's Mm -hmm. what the book, You Can Fix Your Brain, is all about. Why is it you take your shoes off when you walk in the house? It's not some Zen Buddhist thing. (laughs) <laughs> it's that you walk home on the sidewalk and your neighbor sprayed the sidewalk a few hours ago with Roundup to kill the dandelions. Now you have Roundup on your shoes. You walk on the carpet in your house, now there's Roundup in the carpet. Your infant's crawling on the carpet or your teenage daughter is laying on the, on the rug doing her homework, watching television. Now they get Roundup on their hands and on their arms and in their face, right into their body. The stuff mm. is extremely toxic. That's why you take your shoes off at the door. You leave the outside world outside. And you learn to get the best air filtration system you can in your house, the best that you can afford, and water filtration system. You have to realize this toxic world we're living in, 250 pounds per person per day, this toxic world we're living in is killing us to the point of extinction. I never thought I'd be apocalyptic, but you know, you got to <laughs> wake people up. It's like, it's wake what- up. 
It is what it is. I hate to use the platitude, but that is what it is. It's like, you know, it's funny. People don't want to deal with reality. You know, it's like, I'm going to just deny reality and just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You know, I love a friend of mine. She's a health coach. And when people, we tell people, you know, to go gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, here's your test results. Your immune system demonstrates it. And they go, it's so hard to go gluten-free. And she looks at me and I says, no, cancer is hard. Heart attacks are hard. This is not hard. We'll yeah. make this easy for you. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. We just don't want inconveniences now in our culture. Mm-hmm. And it's killing us. It's making your kids get infections all the time more antibiotics, killing off the bacteria in their gut. They get sicker and sicker. Why is it for the first time in the history of the human civilization ever, children born today have a shorter projected lifespan and will die at an earlier age than the age their parents die at? Now, that's an interesting fact. That is a terribly interesting fact. Yeah, kids are dying at earlier ages. What is going on here? We have to wake up. And, you know, mm-hmm. don't believe me. Just read the science. Read my books and then look at the studies. You don't believe it? Order the study. And then mm-hmm. when you read, my God, he, he was right about that. Because the scientists are trying to tell us, but the information is suppressed. We talked about this in our last interview in the Journal of Attention Disorders. They, every child with a sensitivity to wheat, when they took wheat out of their diet, every single child showed significant improvement in all 12 DSM-4 markers of attention deficit. Fails to pay attention, interrupts frequently, blurts out answers, can't sit still. Every marker in every child improved. What if that were a drug? It'd be on the front page of every newspaper in the country, but it's an eating style. There's no profit in it. So Mm -hmm. no one is marketing that concept. Well, they don't have a concept. The fact that those cytokines actually paint the postsynaptic receptor sites. They actually just go in like peanut butter right on the postsynaptic receptor site. So your immune system is lit up, which we're going to be talking more about because this is really your hot topic. Your system is lit up. The cytokines are running around all through whatever, the blood-brain barrier and your synaptic, postsynaptic receptor sites, and they're camping out on the postsynaptic receptor site, competing for the neurotransmitters. And who can think if your brain isn't working? I mean, it happens that way. Exactly right. In this new book, I introduce a term that I hope becomes common language within a year. Capital B, number four. B4. Now, what does B4 mean? A breach of the blood-brain barrier. Let's talk about that. Every brain dysfunction that I've researched, every single one of them includes a breach of the blood-brain barrier. You've heard of leaky gut. This is leaky brain. And now there are tests available to check for a leaky brain. It's called a neural zoomer. And this is pretty funny. I was married almost two years ago in our vacation. We spent six weeks in Costa Rica. And I could work from there. As long as I have an internet, I can work. And so we had a wonderful time. And I read 93 research papers on my honeymoon. <laughs> all, all on the blood-brain barrier. And the, and the result is the neural zoomer test is now out, so you can test for inflammation in the brain. And it has a sensitivity IgG of 97% for IgA 99%, and a specificity IgG 98% and IgA 100%. My God. And there's never been lab tests like that before that are that accurate all the time. But it's new technology. It's called silicone chip technology. And it's the best test available in the world to see if you currently have a sensitivity to wheat. It's called the wheat zoomer. And the best test in the world to see if you have inflammation in the brain called the neural zoomer. Uh, They're incredible tests. Listeners, we're going to have that right there in the show notes. So don't worry about it. I've got it. It's going to be there. Just pop over and we'll have the link wherever it goes. I don't know. What's the company that does that? Uh, Uh, The company is vibrant. They don't work with the general public, but you can get information on my website, Mm thedr.com. You can download information, take it to your doctor, have him order the test. Most doctors won't because they don't know anything about it. Or you can order the test on my website. It's fine. Very cool. That is so interesting. It is. It is. It's a different world right now, but the only thing everyone who's listening needs to get out of today, when you got the life jacket, get out of the water. 
walk up the hill, go back up river and start investigating where did it come from. That's the only thing you have to get out of today. And then there's one more thing. Base hits win the ball game, not home runs. Everybody wants the home run. What do I take to fix this right now? But it's going to take a shift in lifestyle to fix it. You have to figure out what fell in the river that carried you downstream and eventually over the waterfall. Here's an example. When you pump gas, Dr. Parker, when you fill up your gas tank, do you sometimes smell the gas while you're pumping? Oh, yeah. I try to walk away from it, but I do. That's benzene. Benzene is a neurotoxin. It goes right through the lungs, into the bloodstream, up to the brain, through the blood-brain barrier. It's a neurotoxin. So that means you're standing downwind. Walk around to the other side of the hose. Now you're standing upwind. Yeah. Or walk away, as, as Dr. Parker, you do. Walk away is the best thing, but if you have to hold it for some reason, walk around to the other side. Now you're up to upwind. You don't smell it anymore. And there are so many things like that that you can do. Take your shoes off when you come home. You know, so many little things that will help to protect you and your family. Mm. You just don't know about it. And the concept is base hits win the ball game. You learn a little bit every week, one hour a week. One hour a week, I'm going to review this podcast. I'm going to read his book, or I'll read Dr. Parker's book of once again. Just one hour a week. In six months, you got this down. And then for the rest of your life, you're protecting your family. You're protecting your health. But if you don't do this, if you keep thinking, where's the magic bullet? Where's the life jacket that's going to get rid of my son's attention deficit? What pill can I take? I'm sorry to be so blunt, but you're going down. And you know what? We're looking at extinction of the species. Someone has to say mm. to people, wake up. So true. So wake true. up. Well, now let me ask you another practical question because you got me going on this. And, and we've had a debate in our family. My, my son in California has an osmotic water filter and I've got a, it's a non-osmotic water filter, but water is something we are all taking in. And we, we don't want to take them out of plastic bottles because the plastic bottles may or may not have, you know, the uh, phthalates. Yeah, right. The phthalates. In phthalates them. in them. But then the issue is, tell us a little bit about what you think about the water, because I think water itself is a problem for many of us. It certainly is. It certainly is. And if you don't have anything available, you drink the water, you know, mm -hmm. coming out of the tap. Drinking water is more important than not drinking water in the big picture of your health. But the cleaner your water is, the better. The cleaner the water, the better. As a result, you get the best water filtration system that you and your family can afford. You might be able to afford a countertop unit. And so from the kitchen sink, you run all the water through that, and that's what you cook with, and you go there for drinking. But you're still brushing your teeth or taking showers in the other water, right? Mm -hmm, so if mm -hmm. you can afford a full home unit, you do that. But you just get the best that you can afford. And as far as I know, there are three components to a water filtration system. One, a two micron filter. Two, reverse osmosis. And three, charcoal granulation. There's a fourth component now. Some water filters are using UV light. As the water goes through, the UV is killing bacteria. The only complication with this is that you lose the minerals in the uh, water when you filter it that well. You know, to filter all the crud out, you're filtering out some of the minerals also. So you have to make sure to get enough minerals. Now mm -hmm. that can be with a supplement or if you eat the right kind of diet, you'll get lots of minerals from your food. That is so interesting. So the bottom line is that whole reverse osmosis thing is a high cost item. That's, that's really for the whole house. Yeah, but there are countertop units also that will have oh, reverse are. osmosis. Okay. Yeah, there are, there are. And it's true, it takes out a lot of the minerals so you, you can become mineral deficient. So you, you have to take that into account and eat high mineral foods like lots of vegetables and whole grains and maybe even take a supplement for minerals and you're fine. So the two micron water filter is kind of the passive one where you just runs through the filter and you got to change it like every, you know, four to six months, something like that. Correct. It's the oil filter in your car. You've yeah. got to filter out the crud. There's lots of crud in your water. Like it or not, there's lots of crud in your water. Another one, though, is really shocking, is shower heads. 
there's a biofilm that forms in shower heads and bacteria loves it in there. <laughs> and when you check the water coming out of the shower compared to the water coming out of the bathroom sink, the water coming out of the shower often has a lot more bacteria in it. So anytime you turn the water on the shower, you know there's a little bit of a scent right away and then it's gone right away after that. You just got plastered <laughs> with millions of streptococcus or clostridium you know, whatever the biofilm is protecting in the shower head. Now, listen, I'm going to interrupt this for just a second, Dr. O'Brien. I've got to take a little break here, but I'm going to ask you a question. We take this break, we get back. The question I want to ask you when we get back is the whole situation of, the, I want to dig more into that blood-brain barrier because we do have, we not only have the public out there, this is really our basic group or is the public, but we're increasingly having numbers of professionals come on board. So let's talk a little bit more, if we can, about that very important B4 concept yeah. and what, what things actually change the permeability of that B4, that blood-brain barrier. Yeah. So we'll talk about that when we get back. We'll be back, folks, in just a minute. Today, the world of mind science, psychiatry, and mental health is rapidly changing with innovative, comprehensive testing that takes both patients and practitioners into a new world of measured details with useful, understandable, and remarkably actionable plans. The key phrase here is cost-effective. Testing also introduces a key parallel word, predictability. Psychiatric treatment failure, especially after multiple medications and our brief hospitalizations, arises directly from the complexity of measurable brain-body imbalances and impediments that explicitly interfere with medical outcomes and create costly difficulties with inadequately informed supplement and medication trials over time. Great Plains provides a leadership team of biomedical experts with advanced laboratory insights approved nationally both by the FDA and CLIA laboratory certifications and is available internationally for both public and medical professions. Great Plains Laboratory is the primary laboratory we've used at CoreSight for years with excellent customer service for both patients and medical colleagues. They are on the spot. They get it every time. In addition, they provide exemplary training modules, which are webinars and conferences, in an effort to broaden practice perspectives wherever you live. Do follow up on one of these complimentary test offers today at http greatplainslaboratory.com forward slash cbj yeah that's core brain journal cbj well folks we're back with dr tom o'brien international thought leader on how we can actually fix our brain he wrote a book you can fix your brain and he's got it broken down to, to a number of chapters with details all the way a whole big section of peer-reviewed evidence. This is not, he's not making this stuff up, folks. This is real. And it's terrifying when you actually hear it. I'm hearing some of what he's talking about for the first time myself, and it's definitely whetting my appetite to think of better things I can do to take care of myself and our family. So, Tom, let's talk a little bit more about that blood-brain barrier, because I think people get a little bit intimidated. They get intimidated by the word neuroscience. They get intimidated by the word brain. But we're talking about you can fix your brain. So we need to get a little more. We need to get a magnifying glass out a little bit and have a little more of a careful look at the permeability of that blood-brain barrier if we can. You bet. You bet. It's been probably, oh, well, let's see. It was in 2000 that Dr. Alessio Fasano published the first papers on intestinal permeability and how to measure it, and the whole concept of zonulin, the proteins of zonulin. So it's been 18 years now when there are now hundreds and hundreds of papers on intestinal permeability. But there were researchers talking about this, and well, Dr. Fasano associated it with the development of autoimmune diseases. And his history was he came through the, he cut his teeth, uh, celiac disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now we know it's through all autoimmune disease, or almost all autoimmune mm -hmm. diseases. And he talked about the trilogy in the development of autoimmune diseases. You have to have the gene to be vulnerable to that, whether it's rheumatoid or MS or whatever it is. You have to have an environmental trigger that sets it off, the straw that broke the camel's back. 
and for celiac, it's wheat. And you have to have intestinal permeability. So that's pretty well accepted now. And so there's thousands of references in the literature to leaky gut or intestinal permeability. We are at this stage in science right now where we were around, oh, 1990, 1995 with the blood-brain barrier, meaning there's lots of studies that the scientists are talking about about a breach of the blood-brain barrier. I read 93 of them on my honeymoon (laughs) in six weeks, but it's only the scientists that the clinicians, the doctors, haven't really embraced this yet because there hasn't been any way of doing anything about it. Now we have the tests that can identify if you have this going on. And if you've got depression, we know that depression is an inflammatory condition, and these inflammatory cytokines are very high when people have depression. And you need a life jacket, you take the life jacket. But you have to go upstream to figure out what's causing all the inflammation. Where's it coming from? And when you do that, many, many times people are able to, the technical term is modulate, which is a good Scrabble word. You know, it means <laughs> monitor or control. You're able to control the level of medication. You know, you work with your doctor and you find that you're tapering it down and tapering it down and tapering it down. And that's not just for depression. It's across the board with almost all of the degenerative diseases that we see today. So the breach of the blood-brain barrier is the gateway as intestinal permeability is the gateway in the development of autoimmune diseases. B4 is the gateway in the development of brain dysfunction. Cross the board. Just go to PubMed, which stands for Public Medical Information. Go to PubMed.gov. It's the National Library of Medicine. It opens up on the search engine right away. And just type in blood-brain barrier and anxiety. Look at all the studies, blood-brain barrier and schizophrenia. Look at all the studies, blood-brain barrier and autism. Look at all the studies. The scientists are talking about this, but it hasn't reached down yet to the clinical utilization. So that's a big part of you can fix your brain, is the general public just has to ask their doctors, doctors, do I have B4? And you'll say, what? What? Do I have a breach of the blood-brain barrier? And you say, well, well, I doubt that very much. I mean, you would be unable to function if you had a (laughs) breach of the blood-brain barrier, which is what the gastroenterologist said about leaky gut in the 1990s. And they still say today, Tom, you know it as well as I do. Yeah, I'm just trying to be (laughs) They they like the word quack on that one. (laughs) Yes, yes. And there are thousands of studies on intestinal permeability now. My goodness. So the purpose of this book is to introduce to the general public with lots of analogies and, and lots of examples and as much as possible in everyday language that you can fix your brain. But you have to spend an hour a week And it'll take you three months. It'll take you six months. It'll take you a year. But Mrs. Patient, if I told you that a year from now, you likely would not need that that anxiety medication anymore. You'll be much calmer. You'll be much more productive in your life. And your family will love you again or whatever the situation is that you're faced with right now. Are you willing to put it in an hour a week for the next year? And if you are, this book is the map. It's the guideline on how to do that. It's amazing that you've been able to pull all that practical information together, Tom. I think it's really, really cool. I think the, and I love the fact that you're really talking to the public because I think the change is going to take place when the public understands these things. And that's the reason we're doing Core Brain Journal. That's why you and I are so close on this whole message because obviously the issue is the process, changing the process. And really it winds up being political. Oddly enough, it's political and it can come from the public. It should be scientific, but the science itself has to be politically acceptable. When the politics are there, they're going to throw the naysayers out. But for right now, we're in that process of overcoming denial and overcoming the workload that's implied by actually having a few of these problems addressed. That's the major problem, of course, if when you, the listener, get you can fix your brain and you say, oh, my God, this just makes sense. And then you go to your psychiatrist 
or you go to your neurologist and say, you know, I just read this book and it really makes a lot of sense about B4, about a breach of the blood brain barrier. And you're a little awkward in talking to them about this stuff because it's not your world, you know, Mm -hmm. and they just shut you down. They most often, because it's a threat, all of a sudden they're not the authority anymore. There's Mm -hmm. someone else coming on the scene. And that's really hard for people to deal with because they need their doctors Mm -hmm. and they're afraid of losing that doctor. So if you approach your doctor in a way that respects their position, doc, thanks so much. You know, I feel so much better on these medications. I wish I didn't have to take as much. And I'm reading a book now that's talking about changing my diet a bit and better lifestyle habits, like sleeping better and all that. And they're talking about this thing. I'm wondering if you could take a look at this, you know, and look into it a little bit and tell me what you think. Tell me if you think that this has got some validity and if it's safe for me to try this. Because one of the things they talk about, for example, if you have elevated antibodies to wheat, then you easily can get a breach of the blood-brain barrier because the brain is the most common system affected by a wheat sensitivity, not the gut. The ratio is eight to one. For every one patient that's got gut symptoms, there are eight that don't. It's somewhere else. That is amazing, Tom. I hadn't heard that before. Oh, yeah. There's a number number of studies on that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Eight times more likely... So the whole business. Outside the gut. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's why the Celiac Society of India asked me to chair their conference in January, this coming January, in New Delhi, because they wanted to do more than talk about celiac disease. They wanted to talk about outside the gut. So the title is the International Symposium on Wheat-Related Disorders Beyond Celiac, Beyond the Gut. And I put together the dream team from all over the world on this, uh, the experts, the real experts who are coming in from around the world to give the doctors a much bigger picture of what's going on. Because rarely, celiac is, yeah, the ratio is eight to one. So rarely does celiac manifest with gut symptoms. It's a gut disease, but it's the gateway. And when you open the gateway, the symptoms will be Mrs. Patient, you pull at a chain, the chain breaks at the weakest link. It's at one end, the middle, the other end. It's your heart, your brain, your liver, your kidneys, wherever your genetic weak link is, that's where the chain's going to break. So for most people, the vast majority of people, it's the brain. So if you have a wheat sensitivity and it's causing intestinal permeability, you're pulling on the chain and the weak link on your chain is the brain. You're pulling, 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 the chain's going to break. And here come the symptoms of brain dysfunction. And what you have to do, stop pulling on the chain so hard. Well, how do I do that? Well, first thing is stop eating wheat. I mean, if you do the right test, and the right test is called the wheat zoomer. The yeah. wheat zoomer. If you do the wheat zoomer and you come back positive, you're done with wheat. And it may take you three months to transition off. You don't have to do it in one day, but any will not be good for you. But if it takes you a little while to transition off, that's fine. You know, but just base hits win the ball game. Take it one step at a time, but have the big picture view. I understand I'm done with this now. I will get off of it as quickly as I can. Folks, it's been such an interesting and provocative and so completely useful discussion. What we're going to do at Core Brain Journal is we're going to have Dr. O'Brien's book. We're going to have a drawing for it there on Core Brain Journal. It's going to be open from the date of publish until about two weeks later. So we're going to you know, if you want a free book, just come in there and put that on a drawing. We don't do this. We have them in there. We don't announce it during the, during the podcast. But I think yours deserves a special announcement and a special drawing, and we want to get people to pay attention to these things. And hopefully what you didn't quite say, which you did say but it wasn't quite say, is if we could get the docs to read this book. If yeah. people would just go into their doc and say, hey, guys, look, I've read this book. I think there's some merit to it. Let's jump on it. Let's really think about this and think about how it might apply to me and the other patients that you treat. I mean, I think it's so relevant. You know, Chuck, I just came back from a mastermind weekend where there were 500, over 500 healthcare practitioners, a lot of leaders in the holistic field. And I was thinking about this, that I didn't have 10 minutes, literally in three days, there wasn't 10 minutes without someone coming up to me and shaking my hand and saying, I just want to thank you for the work you do. And these are doctors Mm -hmm. and health coaches and nutritionists saying, my patients talk about 
what they heard from you and they come in and they ask the right questions. You know, we're exploring new things. So the book, The Autoimmune Fix, has been a catalyst for that. The docuseries, Betrayal, that is available and is a catalyst for that. And now this book, You Can Fix Your Brain, is a catalyst to just help people get the bigger picture. Because as I said earlier, we don't have time to mess around. We're looking at extinction of the species. And just read the studies. Just take a look at what the scientists are saying. And they're not a few crackpots. These studies are coming out of our major universities, and no one's listening. Just as a quick supportive remark, Dr. Alessio Faisano, which Dr. O'Brien was talking about briefly, is the chairman of the Department of Pediatric Gastroenterology at Harvard. He's not in Possum Hollow University, okay? So he, and he leads the research team at Harvard. In case you're wondering about the credibility of these quick references, I think it's just important to know that Dr. O'Brien's playing ball with the big dogs. And I think it's really important that we honor that and we listen to it and we get into our homework on this. Tom, thank you so much for coming on board again. I hope you have a safe trip over there. I know it's going to be a really interesting trip because the good you do is just so measurable and so helpful. We really appreciate it. Oh, Dr. Parker, thanks so much. It's really a pleasure to be with you. We'll do it again sometime, Tom. Yes. <laughs> Next book. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Core Brain Journal. We're working every day behind the scenes to bring you reports that connect research benches with those street trenches. Here we share the complexity of mind science because as you know, details really do matter. One of the most pervasive misunderstood challenges is how commonplace medications like those written for ADHD are used so regularly without clear guidelines. If you think you'd like more specifics, take a minute to download my two-page PDF packed with video links and references on the absolute essentials of how to start ADHD medications. They're easily available at corebrainjournal.com forward slash start. Thanks for listening. Do connect and stay tuned. Together we can make a difference.